Welcome back to Climbing Psychology. I was asked many times to make a video on fear of belaying. And today is finally the day. Of course, I won't be teaching you how to properly belay. There are many other videos that did, would do a much better job than what I can do. Uh, but today I'll be focusing on the fear, different kinds of fears that you can have while lead belaying, how to manage them. And of course, I will make some references about the proper technique as well, but that won't be the main focus. You give slack so slowly. <laughs> When talking about fear of lead belaying, there are three types of fears that can be involved. The first is to drop your climber and injure slash kill them. The second one is to be pulled up by the rope all the way up to the quick draw and get stuck uh, with your hand. And third, you might have the fear of short roping your climber. Being afraid of dropping your climber is absolutely legit. It happens way too often that the climber is dropped to the ground and they injure their ankles, their legs, or even their spine. So it is important to know that there is this risk and it has to be mitigated. The thing is, in most cases, these kind of accidents happen rather for the wrong technique, for inattention. So probably you that are afraid or anxious of dropping your climber, are probably the person that needs this video the least because you are rather attentive and paying a lot of attention about what you're doing but there are still some tips and tricks that I can give you to feel more confident when lead belaying. The first tip and trick that I can give you is use an assisted belay device with assisted braking. So this is the Mammoth Smart 2. There are many other devices. I will show you also the pilot that David has. But uh, even though they look like buckets or ACT belay devices, this is an assisted braking belay device, which means that when the rope goes through it, it will come with the carabiner and it will lock. So even if you were to panic, the belay device will still break the fall. Of course, you should never, ever let go of the dead rope. It's important. We should always say this. But at the same time, you might feel a bit of relief knowing that it, even in the worst case scenario, even if a, a rock falls on your head and you lose consciousness, you won't kill anyone. The second tip that I can give you is to use belay devices. This is actually part of my body check. My, everyone that is climbing with me knows that I have to have belay glasses in every situation, even when I'm belaying for top roping. And this helps so much with keeping an eye on your climber. Mm. Ciao. Especially when you're lead belaying and you have to give and take the slack, having belay glasses is fundamental. And this is because it reduces the delay with which you're giving and taking slack and also is make it, makes it much more easy to always have an eye on the climber. It happens way too often that the belayer gets tired, especially in the neck, constantly looking up and this way it prevents you from getting tired and you will always keep an eye on the climber. Your climber will also feel more confident when climbing knowing that you will always look at them. Finally, as a last tip, do some exposure exercises. Just as when you're doing exposure exercises for lead climbing, you don't want to start with taking a whipper. Actually, you don't want to start with the climber taking a fall at all. Ask your climber to pretend to do some different clips at different heights and get used to taking and giving slack. Then, when you're feeling more confident, you can start by trying to organize taking different kind of falls. Start from below the quick draw and then gradually get higher and higher. Allow the climber to make bigger and bigger falls, all the way up to a whipper. Being pulled up by the rope all the way up to the first quick draw is a realistic case. It is important that you are mindful to where you are standing when you are belaying. You would like to stay as close and underneath to the quick draw as possible so that the force will be directed outwards and not into the wall. And also you should be mindful about the difference in weight between you and your climber. 
I experienced myself that if I am delaying a climb rate that was weighting more than 20 kilos, more than me, then there is a realistic possibility of me being pulled up by the rope all the way to the first quick draw, even if the first quick draw is very far, and being camped in between the quick draw and the belay device. And this might break your hand. I was lucky, I was able to take away the hand very quickly, so I just had a scratch, but it is a real hazard. There is also the special case of the Grigri, because if you reach the first quick draw in that case, it can happen that the Grigri unlocks, and if you let go of the dead rope to protect yourself, then your climber could fall to the ground. In case your climber is much heavier than you, then you should consider using a gnome or uh, not to belay at all, because uh, it is very probable that you might be getting injured. Being afraid of short roping your climber is more of a um, performance anxiety kind of thing. You want to belay properly and not kill your climber's attempt short roping them. So the first practical tip that I can give you is get rid of the Grigri. I know it was expensive, I know that it's very popular and you might feel more secure with it, but just use another assisted breaking device. The Mammut Smart, the Pilot, the ClickUp, the Mega Drill, all of them are fine. Just remember to use their um, proper carabiner, otherwise they won't lock as well. But then giving and taking slack is much easier and you won't be focusing and getting that anxiety out of being afraid of short roping your climber. And they're also much lighter and very, very cheap. The second tip is connected with the point that I gave you already, use belay glasses. Belay glasses make it so easy to see when the climber is reaching down for the rope to get ready to clip. And in that situation, you know that you want to give slack. And if you have belay glasses, it just makes it super easy to do that. And then you will never short rope your climber. Last tip is practice with your climber. Ask them to climb a very easy route and to go as fast as possible. You will need to give and take rope very, very quickly. You will be sure that the climber won't be falling. So the anxiety will be decreased and you will get more confident with giving and taking a slack. Also, remember to talk with your climber about your fears and anxiety. That way, you can be sure that you have the necessary stimulus for you to improve and feel confident, and your climber will feel more confident as well. And that was it. As you may have noticed, it's very important to have a friend that is aware of your fears. It's important in climbing that you have a very accepting and welcoming environment. I hope you found this informative. Let me know if there are any other fears that you would like me to address. If you want to support me, please subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe. You're so useless. I missed it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that you got lucky. You give slack so slowly. <laughs> that was a bit too hard. <laughs>